Hey guys, welcome to my 2016 wrap-up video. I hope you had a Merry Christmas and a Happy Hanukkah and Kwanzaa. I hope you ate too much and laughed too much and stitched too much and partied like it was 1999 all over again. 99 was a really good year, was it not? I had a great Christmas. My sister bought me this shirt and I've been wearing it for three days. I just washed it and got it out of the dryer again. I don't know what's what magic is in it, but it is the most comfortable thing I've ever put on my body. It's called a cuddle dud. And I don't ever want to wear anything else for the rest of my life. It has these um, thumb holes. And these are so you can pretend like you're one of those girls that dances with Danny Kay during the choreography number of White Christmas. That's what these are for. Perfect. So, in this video, uh, I'm going to go over the things that I finished in 2016. I did more stitching than I have ever done in my life in a year this year. I don't know. Yeah, I did a lot of stitching and I have a lot of finishes. A couple of which you've never seen. I haven't showed them on my channel before, so hopefully it won't be completely boring. So we'll talk about cross stitch again. I've said this to a couple people on uh, like the messenger, but <laughs> do you ever have those moments where you're like, I'm making videos about cross stitch. I'm once again watching videos about cross stitch. It's just strange and wonderful. And strange. <laughs> so here we go again. Another video about cross stitch. I'm going to show you these things in the order that I have finished them. Pretty much. Uh, and the first five are my patterns. And that's just how it went down this year. So all the links to everything I'm going to talk about will be down below if you're interested in anything I stitched this year. So first thing I finished was from my Valentine Day, Valentine's Day. I did like five new patterns for Valentine's Day this year. And it is a snarky heart that says, can you not? <laughs> I don't even remember stitching this, but apparently I did because look, here it is. Um, this was my first finish in a hoop. If I'm being completely honest, I never finished anything in a hoop before. Didn't know how to make bows because look at that. <laughs> I'm a really bad bow maker and I have learned how to make them better thanks to Vonna the Twisted Stitcher, but <laughs> there we go. Uh, I need to redo this bow. Another thing I need to redo is the back looks fine and the finishing is good, it's tight, but I need to put some batting in these because it kind of sinks in a little bit. Even though it's tight, it needs something in the middle. So, lesson learned. The second one is another Valentine's Day piece. It is called Remember How We Fell in Love So Sweet. And it's bunnies and snow and birch trees. I really liked doing this one. I think it's nice. I like how it finished. Enough said. All of these are in glass because I love you, but I don't love you enough to disassemble all these so you can see them better. Sorry. The third finish is another hoop that needs batting. Um, the bow rests a little bit better. <laughs> uh, it is Home Sweet Home, and it's just an Indiana piece. Cute. My favorite colors, because I just can't get enough aqua and red. Adorbs. The third piece is my Shakespeare piece. I'll show you in a second, but this was the second piece I have stitched in hand and the last piece I will stitch in hand. <laughs> uh, I didn't mind the process of stitching in hand so much. I think my stitches look 
a little bit neater. I don't know why um, from stitching in hand, but I just cannot get over manhandling my fabric. Um, I wash my hands before I stitch, but you know your hands are never completely clean. If you didn't know that, there you go. Your hands are never completely clean. <laughs> uh, yeah. When I, okay, side story. When I was in college, <laughs> uh, one of the, one of the girls in my dorm was a nursing student and she had to do this like presentation of how dirty your hands actually are. So we were all sitting around in this room and she did some sort of speech for this project she was doing and she made us go wash our hands in the dorm bathroom and then come back and she shut the lights off and she had some sort of light that showed the germs on your hands and of course we all like had neon green hands that were not actually clean so I can't get that out of my head I can't unlearn that <laughs> and so feeling up my fabric it's just not for me here's William Shakespeare is my homeboy I love this piece. I love the colors. Uh, I love his little ponytail and his goatee and I love Shakespeare. So here he is. Isn't he handsome? The next piece is You Can't Touch This, my uh, Father's Day MC Hammer mashup. <laughs> Uh, I love this piece. I can't say it's my best seller. Definitely not. But I think it's adorable. And I have highly enjoyed it. And I might actually give this to my dad this year. <laughs> I never actually intended to give this to my dad. Because I, I like it too much. And he doesn't watch my videos. You better believe it. You can't touch this. Okay, the next pattern uh, is by Dork Stitch. It is Come to the Dark Side, We Have Cookies. I did this twice and finished it twice, and I will never do that again. I think 2016 was the year I learned all the things I will never do again. I will never again stitch a pattern twice. <laughs> it was for a good cause. This is an easy pattern. It worked up quickly, but it was so, it was boring. I'll be honest, it's adorable. My son loves it. I'm glad I stitched it um, for my son and my nephews. I like how it turned out, but never again. I will never stitch the same pattern back to back. I don't know how you guys do it. I know some people were talking about their ornaments and um, like doing the same thing for all their kids. Wow, you're a better person than I, because no. I finished this the lazy way. I will never do that again. Uh, I bought one of those sticky pieces of cardboard that you use for finishing needlepoint and it was a nightmare. I did it to save time but I think it actually took me more time because it's just really hard to work with that sticky stuff. Um, it was these lines aren't completely straight, but they're as straight as I could possibly finagle them and it's just it's very not forgiving. It's very um, bumpy. I won't I won't be able to show you that, but I can see the unevenness of how you know some parts of the fabric are sticking really well and some parts aren't. And maybe I didn't do it right, but, I also stitch, this is on 16 count, and because I'm a coverage freak, I stitch with usually too many strands. So I did this with, I think I did it with three. Yeah, I did this with three strands, and I think Darth Vader has four strands because I always add an extra strand for white and black. So this is some pretty thick stitches. So naturally, the parts of the fabric that don't have stitching on them are sunk lower because they're sticking onto that piece of cardboard and my stitches are raised up and that just looks terrible. Um, so, Steph learns not to take the easy way out. My son loves this and 
he doesn't care and he'll never notice. So there you go. This is one of my favorite finishes for the year. This was my Pride and Prejudice Blessing. Uh, <laughs> I just love this piece. Um, and I love seeing the different finishes that people have done. This has been given for like a christening gift and um, different occasions. It's just, I'm really proud of this. Um, yeah, what else can I say? This is a really quick stitch. If you don't like back stitching, I wouldn't recommend it because most of the text is back stitched, but it goes really quickly and I think it's beautiful. So Pride and Prejudice Blessing. All right, I gotta look at my notes because I'm just pattering away. I'm not paying attention. I finished my Advent Animals. That's in my last video. If you want to check those out, it's hanging up on the wall and I don't want to drag it in here to show it to you again. You already saw it. Um, I finished Festive Friends, my cat and mouse piece. Uh, I will show you that in my next video because reasons. I didn't iron it and what else? All right, I'm going to show you my favorite piece that I finished in 2016. I get emotional over this cross stitch. I, I made it for a sentimental reason, so I'm kind of, I don't know. And I don't get to look at it a lot um, because it's not finished. It's uh, rolled away. And so when I actually get it out and look at it, it's like, <laughs> I love this piece. It is Going to Market by Julia Cairns. This is a dimensions kit. I just think it's gorgeous. I love the colors. I love the background. I love I love everything about it. Let's just gaze at it together. I need to FFO that big time. So those are all the things that I stitched and finished. I'm going to show you two things that I didn't stitch but I finished and I get to keep. Don't you wish that was a category <laughs> in your list? Things you didn't stitch but you, you have and you get to keep. Uh, this next, next piece is one of my patterns. It is Smokey the Grammar Police. Only you can prevent bad grammar. Ashley Morgan stitched this for me. Her stitching is impeccable. It's lovely. And then I got to FFO it and keep it as one of my models. I will link Ashley's channel down below. She has some gorgeous, gorgeous projects. She's doing Portrait of Veronica faster than the Blue Blazes. So check out her channel down below. But her stitching is lovely. And I'm so glad that... Um, yeah, I'm so glad that I get to have this. It's an important message that needs to go out into the world. The second thing I have to show you that I did not personally stitch is stinking adorable and it was stitched by my 10 year old daughter Phoebe. Phoebe has done uh, embroidery and needlework before um, but she's totally new to cross-stitching. Uh, one day she just picked up my World of Cross-Stitching magazine and fell in love with some Doreen Jones ornaments that were in the last issue and decided to stitch. So she uh, stitched this and I finished it into an ornament thanks to Vanna's um, pillow ornament tutorial. And here it is. Look how cute this is. Urgh. She put her initials in the corner. This is adorable. This is the most adorable thing hanging on my tree now. And she made my heart happy. Phoebe is my crafty girl and um, she cracks me up. You know, I don't think that she's actually paying it. I don't think she's paying attention to like my cross stitch blah 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 that I do. Um, oh, but she is. Uh, one day we were sitting at the table and she opened up a issue of World of Cross Stitching. She, <laughs> she was looking at this pattern. It was a woman. I don't remember which pattern it was, but it was a lady in a dress and 
she's looking at it and she says, Mom, this pattern could really use some back stitching. And she was totally right. That pattern needed some back stitching. <laughs> that was hilarious. At first I was like, what did you just say? And this pattern needs some back stitching. She was right. I had two give ups this year. Uh, the first being Dance at Bougival by Renoir. Uh, that was my full coverage piece that I just decided I didn't like the definition in the pattern and I also didn't like stitching full coverage. So tried it, not for me. I will admire your full coverage pieces from afar. The second give up I had never admitted to. It's Spring Delivery by Plum Street Samplers. I was having such issues with the colors on that pattern. Um, it didn't match the picture, and I, I'm not blaming the designer or anything, but you know how that drives you crazy when you bought the pattern because you like the picture and then it didn't work out, like the colors don't match uh, the picture, and yeah, I, I did the floss toss, didn't like the colors, and stupidly thought that if I stitched the colors into the fabric that that would make a difference. No, it don't. <laughs> Yeah, and then I tried to do some color swapping after I had started with the original color scheme and I just had had it up to here. Uh, and I ended up adopting that whip out to Trisha at 3 Owl Threads. And she is taking care of it and feeding it and loving it. Yeah, and I don't regret doing that at all. Um, Life is too short to be stitching on something that makes you want to pull your hair out. <laughs> so, uh, a first for this year was stitching with Petite Treasure Braid. I really enjoy that stuff and I look forward to stitching with it more. Um, yeah. So, uh, looking forward to 2017. <laughs> 2017. Uh, I hope to finish all the whips that I have going on right now. Um, so that would include Song of Solomon Sampler, Giant Harry Potter, and And a Forest Grew. Uh, I think I'll be able to finish Giant Harry Potter by midsummer. Ugh. And a Forest Grew will probably take me most of the year to finish up. That pattern is just so gigantic. Um, and that is one of the lessons I feel like I learned this year on the gigantic patterns. I don't know. Um, I do enjoy the process of stitching big patterns, and I think um, having that experience with the Advent Animals and getting so many blocks done a month really was fun. And then I turned around and started two gigantic pieces. I don't know. I I like the process of actually finishing things, and I don't like letting things linger. Um, but yet I'm drawn to such gigantic patterns. I don't know how to sort that out in how I work through things. I don't know. But it's not a huge deal because I I enjoy cross-stitching. I don't like micromanaging it. I don't like um, setting huge goals. I don't like forcing myself to do things I don't want to do. This is my area of fun and so I'm not going to hyperanalyze it. Uh, but I do want to finish those two gigantic pieces, and yeah, I don't know, whatever, right? Whatever. Uh, possible starts. I do want to start um, Mother and Child, that's another Julia Karen's piece um, that I have the kit for. I also want to start my Julia Line uh, French named piece. <laughs> La Brie de No, I want to start that one. Um, I don't know, we'll see. I, I have a list of things that I'm interested in and that I would like to start, but I would like to finish these big giant pieces before I get too involved in a bunch of other projects. Yeah. Uh, things I want to work on next year. I have a 
tension issue. Uh, and I didn't realize that I had a tension issue until I was stitching on that damask Ada. It was really, really soft. <laughs> and so all of a sudden I was noticing gaping holes and um, that's not good. I remember Vana saying something to the effect that, um, you know, she knows all the how it's supposed to be perfect because she's trying to win the grand champion of the fair that she goes to. But um, if you hold your whip up to the light and you can see holes, um, distinct holes, you have a tension issue. And I don't think I noticed it as much because I was doing so many projects on Ada for my store and I you know, overload my strands of floss because I like really, really thick coverage. So that there's no room to have holes, but I have noticed on my giant Harry Potter, which is on Lugana and, uh, that I have holes. <laughs> I have holes. And so I need to, I need to lighten up on my tension, but it's one of those issues that you have to constantly be keeping yourself aware of or you just fall back into habit of the tension that you're used to so I've been working on that but it's, it's not going so hot um yeah I need to I need to lighten up on my tension and not pull it pull my floss so hard <laughs> okay um the other thing that I want to work on is my tails <laughs> this all sounds so bizarre I need to work on my tails. So how many stitches do you run your, your uh, needle through to finish off a strand? I go a little nuts and I need to stop doing that. I've <laughs> it's become a real issue on my and a forest grew where you have a motif that's this big and it has seven colors. And so you're finishing off seven colors in this little tiny space. <laughs> and when you're like me and you want to run your needle through about 10 stitches before you cut the thread, that doesn't go so hot. So I need to stop doing that. And I don't know, what's the minimum? I feel comfortable with six, cutting back to six, <laughs> but I know that you probably don't need to do that either, right? Maybe three. How many stitches do you go behind? I would love to know. So those are my issues. Sorry about that. My camera did its thing. So those are my cross-stitch issues that I have to get sorted out. Say hi, Walter. So, yeah. That's pretty much all I have to talk about. Um, you want to see what I got for Christmas? I asked my husband for a new perfume that I picked up myself at the store. I sprayed it on my grocery list and the tester bottle looked pretty normal. Um, you know, it doesn't, they don't have like all the frills that the, you know, normal perfume that you buy because they're just testers. So I sprayed it on my grocery list and it was amazing, so I said, okay, go get me this perfume. It has a really stupid name. And then I opened it on Christmas, and here's what the bottle looks like. What? So apparently my alter ego is a female rapper, but this stuff smells amazing. I'm going to tell you the name. Don't judge me. It is <laughs> Viva La Juicy, Juicy Couture. <laughs> what in the world? But it smells like magic. 
and rainbows and the Scottish sunset. I'm really good at describing scents. Go get you some. Um, the succulent died. It was in its death throes for about two weeks. So I kept it by my bedside and it crossed the rainbow bridge. So I think for the sake of the environment, I'm not going to be getting any more house plants because I have a record. What else is there to talk about? You're just sitting there stitching, right? Top five books I read this year. I'll give them to you. I read um, 49 books this year, which sounds like an incredibly large number, but for me it is incredibly small. In 2014, I read 114 books, which now sounds like I was insane. I wouldn't put that out of the question. Top five. Okay. The best book I read this year was, drumroll, Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. That book is amazing. It is a thousand pages long and I didn't want it to end. Um, it was incredible. I have never seen the movie, so I walked into it completely blind. I of course knew the last line that Rhett says in the book or at least in the movie, uh, it was, it was incredible. I, I have a hard time picking up a book that big because I know it's going to take me forever to read and it, it could have been 2,000 pages long. It was really, really good. There are a few pages of, uh, total racial nonsense, uh, where Margaret Mitchell goes into her theory of how black people are not very smart. Um, but other than that, there wasn't, there, there was less gar less of that garbage than I thought there would be. I'll just put it that way. There was just a few pages that made me want to gag, but, um, amazing story. Number two would be, uh, The Circle by Dave Eggers. Um, that book is, it's not like an amazing piece of literature that you're going to brag to your grandchildren about. It just explores the idea of transparency and internet and audience. And it's just really interesting. Um, yeah, I could go on about that one, but I won't. The movie's coming out this year. It looks terrible. What's happened to Tom Hanks? That's what I'm wondering. He used to be this great thing. No, he's made some good movies. He's just like in everything and now he's becoming like this stock old man character. The movie looks bad. Read the book. All right, what else did I read this year? I said I had top five and I'm just thinking off the top of my head. Oh, All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. That book got a lot of hype this year. Well deserved. That was an amazing story. Beautifully written. Uh, suspenseful. It's mysterious. It's lovely. It's just an awesome story. I think anyone would enjoy that book. It's just... It's heartwarming. I'm not a booktuber. What do you want? It was an amazing story. Go read it. Another book that I really liked was uh, My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante. That one also got a lot of well-deserved hype. It, it was amazing. That lady can write. I mean, it's basically just the story of two best friends growing up in Italy. And that sounds really boring, but it was completely captivating. Um, I ended up reading the whole series, but the first one is definitely the cream of the crop. My Brilliant Friend. 
Just kidding, it was a top four list because I can't remember anything else that I read. So let's wrap this up. I don't have a career as a booktuber. I hope you ring in the new year with style. Um, happy stitching everyone. I, From me to you, a very heartfelt, I enjoy your videos and your comments. You guys, the cross stitch cat commune really needs to be a thing. Just saying. We really need to do that. Um, it should be a, our retirement plan that we all are going to move to the Pacific Northwest with our stitching stash and raise cats and live in yurts and enjoy each other's company. Enough said. Talk to you guys next time. Bye! <laughs>